Welcome to a quick tour of Excel. In this section, I will show you the basic parts of Excel 2013 before we get into the actual functionality of Excel. As you can see, I have already opened Excel. The default screen allows us to open previously created workbooks here or to create a new one. We can either create one from a blank workbook or we can use the templates created by Microsoft. In our example, we will start with a blank workbook. We will identify other items in Excel as we progress through the course, but the following will be worth knowing in, event, in advance. The key components as I see them to Excel 2013 include workbook. The actual file that we save is called a workbook. Each workbook includes one or more worksheets. Worksheet is a single sheet or page in a workbook. As you can see, this is a worksheet. In common usage, workbooks and worksheets are often referred to collectively as spreadsheets. The sheet tab are the tabs in the lower left that allow you to select from different worksheets within a workbook. As you can see, we only have one sheet. If we click this plus button, we can add a new sheet and you can see the default is to add sheet 1, sheet 2. Now to select one of these we just click on the the various sheet tabs and as you can see that the active sheet is highlighted. Up here we have the quick access toolbar. It is customizable and it's a toolbar that allows you to access your most commonly used Excel menu commands. So you can either create a new file, you can open one, you can save, and you can see the ones that are checked are the ones that you would have up there. And adding or taking away is as simple as if it's checked, check it again, and as you can see, it will be unchecked. These are just quick shortcuts. Now this is the often touted, often lamented ribbon interface. I'll be honest, when it first came out I missed my menu functionality. I'm now used to it and I don't think I could go back to the the traditional menus that we see in 2003 or earlier. And again, most of us are familiar with the menu options in Excel as that's the legacy from the older versions of the program. So as you can see Microsoft has changed it slightly. It used to be you click on a menu item and you got a drop down. Now we see these graphical views, um, little icons representing various things. The ribbon interface is meant to replace the functionality of menus through a graphical user interface. Key to Excel is knowing the difference between a column and a row. Columns are the vertical cells in Excel. Columns are identified by letters in the column header and the letters range from A to XFD. And the way it works is as you go up you start with A to Z and then you go AA through ZZ or sorry AZ and it just keeps going and going all the way up to XFD. So what that gives us is a fairly wide range. Um, again, I wouldn't recommend a spreadsheet that wide. Rows, on the other hand, so columns are horizontal. Rows are the, sorry, columns are the vertical. Rows are the horizontal. And rows are delineated by numbers. So the letters are part of the column header the numbers are part of the row header. Now to select an entire row you just click on the appropriate number for that row. You can see it's highlighted. If you want to select a column you can just click on the appropriate letter. If you want to select the entire worksheet for some reason you click in the top left corner at the intersection of A and 1. To deselect you just click anywhere in the spreadsheet. Now as you can see these lines each of these 
represent a cell, and cells are the intersection between a column and a row. Cells are the basic storage unit for data in a spreadsheet program. Now because Excel uses referencing, cell references are used to identify the location of our data. In a cell reference, the column letter always comes before the row number. So for example, you can see we're in cell A1. If we click over here, you can see we're in cell P23. And a little tip if you notice, P and 23 are actually highlighted as well as the active cell. Formula bar is located here and it displays the data or formula stored in a cell. In the active cell. The formula bar can be used to enter or edit a formula, a function, or just data in, an, in a cell. If you want to use a function or a formula, you click on this FX and Excel allows you to pick. So for example, if we wanted an average, we would click OK, and Excel brings up a little wizard that helps us with the calculation. Once we're complete and satisfied, we click OK, and you can also verify your formulas. We can't do it because we don't have a formula there. Now this little box will come to later, but this is known as the name box. And as you can see, it shows the highlighted cell, or the active cell. So for example, here J12, you can see in the name box we're also at J12. We'll get into the more advanced later, but if you wanted to name that sample, instead of using J12 in a formula, you could actually use sample. We'll change it back to J12 just for simplicity. Okay, and I've alluded it to it earlier, but the active cell is the cell that is being affected by data entry or formatting, and as you can see, it's always highlighted as opposed to the cells around it. So that, in a nutshell, would be the critical pieces of Excel that I think you need to know. Um, at the end, we'll actually do a little tour showing you what each of the ribbons do, but for now, this will get you started, and we'll talk about a few of the ribbon items as we go through.